throughout our planet's history, massive volcanic eruptions have devastated life. Could one bring an end to human civilization? In the Bay of Naples, Europe's most notorious giant is showing signs of reawakening from its long slumber. The Italian name for the supervolcano translates to burning lands, an appropriate name for the massive volcano. It consists of a vast and complex network of underground chambers that formed hundreds of thousands of years ago, stretching from the outskirts of Naples to underneath the Mediterranean Sea. The past 500 years have been fairly peaceful ones for the volcano. But recent events suggest that this period of quiescence may be coming to an end. But the difficult question is not if, but when, and just how big an event this would be. A violent eruption would blast molten rock and volcanic gases a few thousand feet into the atmosphere. It would surely be a major event, potentially requiring the evacuation of hundreds of thousands of people. The volcano's most notorious supereruption occurred 39,000 years ago. It punched an estimated 80,000 liquid gallons of molten rock 40 miles up into the stratosphere, along with an estimated 450,000 tons of sulfur dioxide. The ash cloud was carried as far as central Russia, 1,200 miles away. The eruption occurred at a time when much of Europe was already going through a lengthy glacial period and the consequences are thought to have devastated much of the continent for centuries. The huge quantity of sulfur dioxide released would have created a volcanic winter. Entire swathes of land, including Italy, the Mediterranean coast and the entirety of Eastern Europe, were left covered in up to 8 inches of ash. This would have destroyed vegetation and created a vast desert. Much of Russia was immersed in 5 centimeters of ash, enough to disrupt plant life for decades or more. We know from chemical analysis that the ash contained fluorine, which has a strong impact on vegetation, and it would have produced a disease called fluorosis in animals. This would have had a knock-on impact on humans. In addition, the huge quantity of sulfur dioxide released would have created a volcanic winter. Sulfur dioxide backscatters the sun's radiation in the upper atmosphere, preventing it from reaching the ground. The 1991 Mount Pinatubo eruption in the Philippines, one of the biggest of the 20th century, did exactly this, temporarily lowering the global temperature by around 1 degree Fahrenheit. But the 39,000 BC eruption may have had a far greater impact with some scientists estimating that it decreased temperatures in Europe by as much as 6 degrees Fahrenheit, drastically altering the climate for many years. The timing of this huge eruption is suspicious, because many archaeologists believe that 39,000 years ago is roughly when our rivals, the Neanderthals, died out in Europe. It has long been speculated that the eruption triggered extreme environmental conditions across Europe contributing to the extinction of the Neanderthals. However, while the impact on the Neanderthals was surely significant, many scientists now believe it is unlikely that this single event was cataclysmic enough to wipe them out. Archaeological evidence suggests that Neanderthals persisted in parts of Western Europe for some 10,000 years after the eruption. This may be because of the way the ash dispersed. After the eruption, Neanderthal archaeological sites are found only in France and Spain. This is probably because these two areas were not affected by the eruption at all, because the wind was blowing towards the east. To reach Western Europe, modern humans would have had to cross the Middle East and the vast desert created by the eruption, and it would have taken many hundreds of years for this landmass to recover. For now, it is unclear how much damage the volcano's last major eruption did. But it is far from the only supervolcano on the planet. Earth's geological history is a catalogue of apocalyptic-looking volcanic events. 74,000 years ago in Indonesia, an eruption of similar scale occurred, and the supervolcano responsible remains active. Situated in the midst of a mountain range in northern Sumatra, 
the tranquility and natural beauty of Lake Toba makes it a popular tourist location. But this lake is actually an enormous caldera, a footprint of the most extreme climatic event in human history. The colossal scale of the eruption means that volcanic gases from Toba are thought to have been ejected through both hemispheres of the Earth's atmosphere, causing them to circulate all around the world. The Toba eruption was the biggest in the last two million years, which is the period when humanity started to evolve. It's a particularly prominent eruption, because 74,000 years ago is around the time that modern humans, Homo sapiens, burst out of Africa and spread across Eurasia. But exactly what effect this had on the human race has been the subject of much controversy. Volcanologists discovered large ash deposits from Toba in marine sediments scattered across the Indian Ocean. The ash contained a chemical signature that could be traced back 75,000 years. Later studies found similar ash in the South China Sea, Arabian Sea and even in Lake Malawi, 4,400 miles away from Toba, in Africa. The colossal scale of the eruption means that volcanic gases from Toba are thought to have been ejected through both hemispheres of the Earth's atmosphere, causing them to circulate all around the world. There's an ice core in Greenland where there is a chemical record of how global temperatures went up and down over the past 125,000 years, and there is a large peak of sulfur, which seems to correspond to the time frame of Toba. If the Toba eruption did indeed send vast quantities of sulfur dioxide around the world, scientists predicted it may have sparked a volcanic winter, which blackened the skies and lasted several years. However, there is something suspicious in the archaeological record. Indonesia, Malaysia and India are thought to have been blanketed in at least two inches of ash from Toba, which undoubtedly affected vegetation and caused mass floods. Yet archaeological studies of ash deposits appear to show that Homo sapiens were remarkably resilient to the environmental changes. The main signs of human activity around this time are stone tools of the Middle Paleolithic period, such as points and scrapers. When archaeologists excavated deposits above, through, and below the Toba ash layer, they didn't really see much change at all in these Stone Age technologies, before and after the eruption, which suggests that it didn't really cause any mass extinction. In fact, the volcano may have helped modern humans who were living off the ocean, to spread out of Africa, at a time when Neanderthals, Denisovans, and other archaic humans were not as adaptable to sudden environmental change. The key factor may be that most of the ash from Toba is believed to have fallen in the ocean, where it would have had only minimal effects. However, the impact was still extremely severe for some populations. Toba was an incredibly large eruption, so it would have devastated certain areas, particularly in the immediate vicinity in Sumatra and elsewhere in Southeast Asia, which was populated by Denisovans and possibly Homo erectus. Soon after the eruption, we find Homo sapiens in Southeast Asia, so this may indicate they took advantage of the devastation brought to the local Denisovan population by the eruption. In areas like India, which is further afield but was still blanketed in ash fall, people were inhabiting a diverse range of habitats and microclimates, in forests, desert fringes, plains, and hill ranges. This means that populations would have coped differently following Toba's aftermath, suffering in some areas more than others. If a lot of sulfur dioxide was released in a future eruption, this could cause monsoons and climate shifts. This would all be very problematic, but scientists are skeptical that a single explosive event like this could actually wipe out humanity. Instead, Volcanologists say that another type of volcanic event may pose a much greater threat to our existence. Over the past 500 million years, all of the five largest mass extinctions in the fossil record have coincided with huge lava eruptions. These eruptions did not happen as single events, but as continuous outpourings going on for hundreds of thousands of years. They are known as flood lava eruptions, and are caused by rising plumes of hot material from deep inside the Earth. 
the most violent flood lava eruptions are thought to be associated with continental drift. Only 11 have taken place in the past 250 million years, each shaping vast mountain ranges, plateaus or volcanic formations. One flood lava event took place 66 million years ago and created a huge expanse of volcanic rock called the Deccan Traps in west-central India. These eruptions may have contributed to the mass extinction that took place at this time, by releasing cocktails of gases that slowly acidified the oceans and altered the climate. While the world's volcanic hotspots are well monitored, we have no idea what to expect or how much warning we would receive. The trouble is, nobody knows when the next flood lava event will occur. Scientists expect another flood lava event sometime in the next 50 million years, but I don't think anyone's got any idea where and when. Whether we are predicting the next supervolcano eruption or the next flood lava event, the problem is the same. A supervolcano has not been observed in recorded human history, while the last major flood lava eruptions occurred 10 million years ago in southern Canada, many millions of years before our species walked the planet. While the world's volcanic hotspots are supremely well monitored, we have no idea quite what to expect or how much warning we would receive before an event of such scale. Our tiny snapshot of monitoring time is dwarfed by volcanic cycles that last millions of years. We have no real idea where we are on these cycles. It is entirely possible that nothing will happen in our lifetimes, or even in the next hundred thousand years. There is only one certainty about these eruptions. Eventually, they will happen again.